and now we're ready to start baking the high poly to the low poly so i'm just going to set it to 4k i'm going to load the high poly mesh and then i'm going to change the frontal and rear distance to 0.03 and then i'm going to in id set it to mesh id and change it to random and then i'm also going to increase the anti-aliasing a bit and then we can just do the texture baking so with all our textures baked we'll have a normal map world space map a position map, a curvature map, an ID map, a whole bunch of maps that you don't really have to worry about, but we'll utilize them to create the textures. And this is an important one, it's the ID map, the one with all the colors. We'll use that to kind of mask the individual materials. So I'm going to start off with creating a bunch of base materials and then masking the individual parts to create a rough overview of the color palette of the objects starting with a metal and this will be kind of the underlaying material of everything and then i'm going to start adding a few different materials that are essentially like painted metal and i'm not going to bother too much with the details of them i'm just going to give them basic colors and just uh, the basic roughness of them and then i'm going to create a black mask with color selection and then i'm going to pick the colors from the id map So now I'm going to duplicate this process a few times so that I have each part have a basic color. I've done this process before, so I'm already kind of have a rough idea of where I want which colors. Normally, this would be a part that you would do a lot of trial and error to kind of get a good composition of your colors. And remember that the colors you're setting now for these individual materials and the material properties you can change them later. So this is just to get kind of a rough idea of what that material will look like. Even though I had those discs green and I wanted the handle or both handles to also be green, I know that those handles will be a different type of material with different type of detail than those discs in the front of the gun. So I am separating them and I'm creating a folder also specifically for both handles because I'm going to do a bunch of th things there that the other materials won't have. And the reason that we have this ID map generated from the bake is because the high poly that I exported had all of those individual objects. And because they were separated still, so I didn't merge them in Blender, Substance Painter is able to say for each of the separate objects that you find in the high poly, put a different color. So the color ID map is not perfect. And even though you can change the tolerance a little bit, you're still not getting exactly the control you want. So what I usually do is I add to the mask a blur filter and then the levels. And the blur I set to 0.3 and then I'm adjusting the levels on top. And as you can see there, what happens is I'm kind of controlling the coverage of that mask or of, of the color selection mask. And I'm gonna do this to each of these materials because you can see there's some gaps here and there. And by doing that, I'm ensuring that there's no gaps.